You got the call. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the call up presented by Triple Play Fantasy. We have another exciting episode tonight. And of course, you guys know every single week, D Mendy, Michael Richards, and now Vinny are in the house to give it to you. First, Mike, how are you doing tonight? Doing great, Mendy. As always, I say the same thing. Happy to be here. This is still my favorite part of every week. And uh, I'm glad to have Vinny here. You know, I, I was saying off there, we talked for a few hours yesterday. It was great. He knows baseball inside and out, so he's going to be a great addition to the team. Yeah, you guys had your own prospect party last night. I wasn't invited, or I was for a little bit, and then you guys did your thing. Uh, that's why it makes this show great is because you guys are putting in a ton of work outside the show to make it so great for our fans. Uh, Vinny, how are you doing, man? Week two, you kind of feeling like you're in the saddle now and got a groove going? Yeah, I'm doing good. Getting over a cold. Thank God that's over with. You know, I'm just ready to get back into it. I love it. Well, you we saw last week we talked about pitching prospect and their ADP going into this year. So you know we had to touch the other side of the ball, hitting side, and we're talking about hitting prospect ADP, talking about some popular hitters for this coming season in Major League Baseball. And if we feel comfortable at the ADP, they're currently going according to the NFBC, uh, which is the National uh, fantasy baseball championship. So just that's the reference for the ADP we're going to be talking about tonight. And without further ado, let's kick it off with the prospect. Everybody knows and loves the consensus. Number one prospect in most places you look Corbin Carroll, who we know is going to start the year out in the big leagues with the draft compensation now being awarded to teams for rookie of the year and more motivation for these teams to start these guys from day one. You got a taste of the big leagues last year. But overall, between AA, AAA, and the bigs, 557 plate appearances, still hit near 300 with a 410 OBP and 576 slug, 28 homers, 33 stolen bases, 50, 15% walk rate. Uh, this guy just does it all, Vinny, and drafters are taking notice. A min of pick of 45, max of 91, averaging about 60, round right, 65th pick in the draft. Vinny, what do we think? Is that ADP too high, too low, or just right for Corbin Carroll? I think it's just right. Just because if you look at his overall like projection of tools, he he could potentially be uh, a Trey Turner esque type of fantasy player. Like he he hits very well for contact. We still need to see the power. The power really hasn't shown up yet, but it was just a small sample size last season just he can pretty much do no wrong strikeouts are not that big of a concern that's it's pretty much with the player but if we're talking upside and compared to the other players around at adp he's he could potentially end the year as a top 15 to 20 outfielder in that position and i will take that over you know like a brandon marsh or something you can get mm -hmm. within the range I mean, the stolen bases play is a little bit of everything. He's going to be a, a fixture in the center of this lineup that's getting better and better. Right now, just around him, just for reference, Salvador Perez, Alec Manoa. Uh, you have Max Fried, Trevor Story, Adolis Garcia. So you are going to have to pay to get him. This is not somebody you can snag at the end of your drafts or uh, you know get him as a value. He's going, if you're in a 15-team league, right in the beginning of round five. So... Uh, you do have to make sure you pay the premium to get him, but Vinny is all in on what it costs to get Corbin Carroll right now. The If we're talking about Corbin Carroll, the other hitting prospect that was taking the prospect world by storm this year and got a taste of the big leagues is Gunnar Henderson of the Baltimore Orioles. Also split time between three levels last year, 635 plate appearances, hit 289, had 94 RBIs, 23 home runs, 113 runs. Chipped in 23 stolen bases, similar K to walk numbers here. Min pick of 59, max of 138. He settles in just under the top 100 at pick 98. 
So, Mike, I'm going to go to you now for the other stud hitting prospect here. Going around pick 98, so not quite as rich as Corbin Carroll. What do we think of that draft price? I was debating this one for about an hour earlier today. Uh, I'm actually thinking that I'm in on him. and I mean, I'm not going to get him, obviously, in every league, but uh, his projections, you know, I don't view him as a prospect at this point, just like Corbin Carroll. He's projected for over 600 plate appearances, 22 home runs, and 10 steals. I think there's upside for a little bit more speed than that, you know, 15 steals or something. Uh, and, you know, a guy who is hitting, you know, 250, over 250 with a, over 20 home runs and 15 steals at third base. I mean, I think you're paying for kind of not best case scenario, but you're paying, you're paying up for, for him as a good player, but also there's still room for him to do better than this. So this is a guy I would take in certain leagues, especially leagues where I could gamble on upside and I miss out on the you know, the top six or seven third baseman. I, I definitely believe, because I think he's going to be in the lineup every day. The Orioles are going to put him in a good spot in the lineup. And he made it some massive improvements last year that, you know, he wasn't overmatched as a 21-year-old in the major leagues. That's very promising to me. So I'm, I'm interested in him in certain leagues for sure. Gunner is going in a very interesting spot in drafts, looking at the ADP on the National Fantasy, ba- uh, National Fantasy Baseball Championships. Uh, Christian Javier, Tristan McKenzie are some popular pitchers that people are thinking are going to make a huge leap this year. Also, Vinny Pasquantino, who I think everybody's trying to get in drafts this year, goes right ahead of him. Nathaniel Lowe, George Kirby. Mike, this is, without a doubt, I think, a very interesting spot of people taking for high upside players. So he no doubt fits right in that range. There's been 18 drafts so far, so this is the data we have. So he's going to go in that high upside pick just outside the top 100. Similar player that went around this range last year was Bobby Witt Jr., who was going inside the top 100 um, kind of around this time last year. And we saw what he did. So um, Gunnar Henderson, again, kind of that prospect that we expect to make big things happen this year. And and you definitely um, have the choice to make with those guys that are in that range. Uh, Next player here, Vinny, Josh Young, who was robbed for most of the season just because of injury purposes, but we did see glimpses and flashes of what he can do. Strikeout rate is a little bit high. 31.2% is not going to get it done, but 14 home runs, three steals, a great Texas Rangers lineup, and hopefully he's going to have a full healthy season uh, this year at the bigs. Right now, a min pick of 155, max of 271, settling in around pick 212. So. What do we think, Vinny, in terms of the draft day price for Josh Young? And he's on mute. Rookie! Rookie! Oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, if you're going to take Josh Young, I think uh, just you got to have a lot of caution because as he came back from injury, especially in the minors last year, he wasn't showing the same kind of hit totals. The, the average wasn't as what it was. He's not going to steal your bases. He's Pretty much right now, just uh, you hope for the contact and pray for power. Um, I think if you do take him, take him as like a late flyer if he's still there. But I would I like the other names around that uh, third baseman spot. I'd rather leave with like a DJ LeMayhew or a John Birdie. It's just there's too many questions with uh, Josh Jung that haven't been answered and with uh, the injury history looming there too, I'm just I'm I'm gonna stay away from him. I just don't I just don't see it. He won't be on many or if any of my rosters this year. Yeah, Josh Young is is gonna be interesting. Um, as again coming off his injury riddled season and someone we expect to have a full season with the Texas Rangers this year. Again, just for reference for everybody right now, where you're getting Josh Young in drafts, you're making that decision around. Jack Flaherty, Anthony Rendon, Grayson Rodriguez, who was one of the players we talked about in last week's episode, Jeff McNeil, Trevor Rogers. So there are still a lot of players that can contribute and have high upside for your fantasy teams this year in that range. So you got to make a decision on him as well. Uh, but Josh Young for the Texas Rangers, hopefully should be somebody that can help you out in a major way in 2023. Our next hitter, somebody that uh, honestly has had a lot of prospect hype and uh, now he finally got into the big leagues, and we're hoping to see a full season of him next year as well. And Tristan Casas of the Boston Red Sox. 
Split time between three levels last year, 429 plate appearances, a 263, 380, 486 slash line, 17 homers, 53 RBIs. The walk and K rates are very respectable, 15.9% walk rate, 21.7% K rate. Even gave you a stolen base last year. Min pick of 176, max of 301, ADP of 245. So, Mike, John, I think hopefully still listens to the show. So you better be careful with your Tristan Casas talk here. What do you think about Tristan Casas' 245 ADP? This is another one that I had some trouble with. Uh, I kind of came to the conclusion that I think it's fair, depending on the type of team that you're building. You know, like with all, all these guys, there's still question marks about how it's all going to play out. But this is a guy with an above average hit tool and, and plus raw power, maybe even double plus raw power, which we haven't fully seen. You know, Steamer's projecting 524 plate appearances, 21 home runs, uh, you know, a 22% strikeout rate, uh, 124 WRC plus. So to me, I think at that range in the draft, I think you're going to find that he's probably a worthy pick when compared to the other guys that are going around there. And I'm not saying he's going to be the best pick. There could be other safer players, but uh, the, those projections right there, I think if you're looking for a first baseman late, he's going to be on the team all season. And like, I should reiterate, like this isn't just the typical first baseman who's going to have a low batting average and, and just get into power that you can find deeper in drafts. Like I see him being a guy who's going to be middle of the order with the batting average. That's at least average or maybe even a positive for your team. So th there's upside here. I'll definitely have some shares of Casas in, in certain leagues this year as well. So, Mike, I'm looking at the ADP and some first basemen that are in that range. You tell me if you'd rather have Casas or this first baseman. Would you rather have Tristan Casas or Seth Brown? Casas. Would you rather have Tristan Casas or Joey Manessis? Casas. Would you rather have Tristan Casas or Trey Mancini, who we don't know where he's going to sign yet? Uh, yeah, I would go with Costas there as well. Those are the that three, one's closer. Those are the three first basemen that are going right around where Costas is going. The first two are above him, and Mancini is behind him. So um, that just again, just for reference, there. Uh, kind of if, you, if you're waiting on first baseman, uh, that's kind of the other ones that are around him. So just keep an eye. I'm sure many people in drafts are going to target him over the other guys I just mentioned. So. Don't just think yeah. Just I would see him as a good a good guy to have as your corner infielder, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of if he grows into your starting first baseman, but just kind of draft him as someone you can you know draft him off the projections, right? Twenty plus home runs, you know, with the decent average. Let's talk about a player that right now is only classified as util only. So hopefully he can change that when he actually gets some time. Hopefully a catcher next season, and that's Francisco Alvarez of the New York Mets. One of the top five prospects in baseball in terms on the hitting side here. Three levels last year, double A, triple A, and the bigs. 495 plate appearances, 27 homers, 78 RBIs, 14% walk rate to about a 25% K rate. And going around a min pick of 209, max of 296, settling in a 250.5 ADP right near where Tristan Casas is going. But again, I'm going to reiterate, right now on the NFBC, he is util only. Uh, and has to accumulate play or time at catcher to get that eligibility for you right now. Util only definitely hurts players in terms of where people are going to be drafting them here, Vinny. Um, what do you think about that 250 uh, ADP for Francisco Alvarez? Um, I think that's pretty solid because what he's going to contribute with his bat, even as a utility spot, he's definitely going to help your team a lot. Like we barely we saw a little glimpse of him last year, but he can potentially show up with plus power uh, above average hit tool. He's definitely going to hammer in RBIs this year. He's going to probably sit in that maybe four five, six spot in the Mets lineup. I, I really like him. It's just, I want to see how he transitions to, with a longer period to big league pitching because the 24, 24.9% uh, K rate is a little sketchy, but if you're willing to take the risk, I would do it. I would advise if it if you're doing a dynasty league, I would target him heavy because I believe he could potentially be a top three, top four type of catching player come two, three years down the road. Now, the popular question here is, Vinny, is he somebody that sticks at catcher long term? Like, you know, maybe he gets a key accumulates enough 
games there this year, but do you think in two or three years he'll stay at catcher or he'll primarily play DH if you had to say it today? I'd say he stays a catcher. There's no one really threatening him for his catching job. He's a solid receiver, but don't expect too much from him defensively. He's just like a hold down the spot for if they mm-hmm. make a big free agent splash or if they or waiting for Kevin Parada to come up, a prospect they drafted in the first round last year. But yeah, I'm I like I like his ADP. Okay. Francisco Alvarez is a smash at two pick two fifty. This player next I saw up front and personal at the Arizona Fall League and very much looked the part. Jordan Walker of the St. Louis Cardinals, third baseman, who I believe they've actually talked about shifting some people around in, in the Cardinals organization once he does make the jump here. Uh, 536 plate appearances last year in double A, a 306, 388, 510 slash line, 19 homers, 68 RBIs, 22 stolen bases, a 10.8 walk rate to 21.6% K rate. This is a guy going min of 186, max of 398, a 267 ADP. This was the piece of the Cardinals that they did not want to give up in a Juan Soto trade. So if this is how much they view their guy, a Jordan Walker, in terms of his value long term. My question to you is, Mike, is that 267 ADP? Do you value that for this season? What do you think? This was probably more difficult than the first two for me because of how much I love Jordan Walker. But just trying to be unbiased here, this is a 20-year-old who hasn't played in AAA yet. And I know the Cardinals are really high on him, as am I. But he's projected for under 400 plate appearances, which is all I really have to go off right now. 11 home runs, 7 steals. That's not something that I can draft in a a regular league where I need stats right off the bat and don't have deep benches. He is someone that I would target and draft and hold leagues at the right price. I mean, I obviously love him a lot closer to that 398 than the 186 because the 186 is, I mean, there's some like proven guys who are going to have everyday jobs up there. So you're paying all of his paying for like a full season of him being good at that price. Uh, But yeah, it's just really the age and the uncertainty about when he's going to come up. I really love him as a player. And if he falls to me in certain spots and certain drafts, I will take him, but I have a feeling that his name value will ultimately lead to me not landing him in most leagues. Now, Mike, I know you love these questions. If I had to give you a 10 that he starts the year in the bigs, no doubt in your mind, and a one being uh, he has basically almost no shot to get the job out of spring training, what would you give his chances of potentially earning a job out of spring training? I would say it's a three. I mean, I think it's there's a slight possibility, but I I, I don't I don't think it's going to happen. I think unless the Cardinals have already made that decision mm-hmm. within the organization, I feel like they're going to handle him like they handled Nolan Gorman last year, who was the same age, mm-hmm. kind of got some at bats up at AAA, showed that he was good, and then come up and he's just part of the team. And if he, but they have a good team too, so it's like he's going to have to hit to stay in the lineup every day. So there's still risk in all of this. You know, down the road, this is going to be one of the top two or three guys at the position but for next year i'm a little hesitant if he's going higher and higher right now right around him that play third base on the nfbc luis urias goes ahead of him and then right after jordan walker you can get uh luis rendifo you or actually luis rendifo i'm sorry goes ahead of him right after him you can get ha kim or yon mancada uh are the next options at the third base position so Again, if you're struggling at that spot, it's up to you if you want to take the proven guy in the bigs or the, take the chance on the prospect that might come midseason uh, with Jordan Walker. Our next player here is somebody that made a big jump to the bigs last year. I think shocked many people uh, how quickly he ascended at the end of the season, and that's Ezekiel Tovar of the Colorado Rockies, their next great shortstop prospect here. 353 plate appearances across three levels last year, a 308, 378, 518 slash 15 homers, 51 RBI, 17 stolen bases, uh, 8.2% walk rate, but K rate very manageable, 21.2%. Min pick of 193, max of 410, averaging out at pick 301, Vinny. Um, again, we talk about the great Colorado Rocky shortstops with Troy Tolowitzki and then Trevor Story. He's supposed to be the next guy here. He ended the season in the big, so you think there's a good chance he starts out the year on the roster. It's 301 a bargain. I'm personally going to say no, but 
knowing that I'm going to say no, he's probably going to prove me wrong this year. <laughs> but I do like other names uh, in the same ADP as him. I like Luis Garcia mm -hmm. of the Nationals a lot more than I like Tovar. But Tovar is pretty interesting because he's not a big power guy, but with him playing in Coors Field, I could definitely see him maybe bumping it up to a 20-23 type of home run season. If you put that with his batting average and his just offensive production in general, he could potentially be next year's Jeremy Pena maybe if he does start the year with the Rockies. The team's not really in the competing window now, so I don't know if I want to take that risk, but there's definitely a lot of upside with Tovar. But I, I don't know if I'm willing to just jump on it yet. Yeah, it's definitely hard, um, you know, him getting the taste of the bigs last year, but there's a lot of questions there. Um, you have to make that decision if you want the proven player in Luis Garcia or take the chance on Tovar. I would love to see if throughout the offseason if we get any kind of signs that the Rockies are committed to him getting the job right out of spring training and if he's somebody that we think can stick uh, throughout the season and they'll give him the chance. But we know the Colorado Rockies, and they love to block their young players from getting playing time, so you have that history going against Tovar. So I think there's, it's definitely the right way to be very wary, even at pick 301. Let's talk about one of the fast and rising prospects in the Los Angeles Angels system, Logan Ohapi, the catcher. He put time between double A and the bigs last year, 463 plate appearances, 26 homers, 80 RBIs, gave you seven steals from the catcher position, a nearly one to one K to walk ratio. And he's going right after Tovar pick 303. Mike, I think Ohapi is right now, from what I'm hearing, every, some people's late favorite late catching target to get, especially in a two catcher league. What do you think about Mr. Ohapi? Yeah, you just took the words right out of my mouth. For me, he's a draft and hold guy as your second catcher that I would kind of target aggressively in in all those settings. I'm still not exactly sure when he's going to be called up. I, I don't know if he's going to start the, the start the year with the team. He's only projected for you know, 288 plate appearances. So that's, you know, catchers don't get as many as others, but um, I'm still hesitant on him in, in as far as like uh, trying to win like a TGFBI type of league. Like I'm not going to be targeting him in something like that, a 15 team redraft where I need as many stats as I can get, but a draft and hold where I can wait and, you know, plug him in. Like I, like last season, Cal, Cal Raleigh, I drafted in the 42nd round of one of those or whatever and just plugged him in and he just became, so those sort of leagues where you can wait on guys and have week, set weekly lineups and stuff like that, he's going to have a lot of value. I mean, the great part about him is that strikeout to walk rate, and he got into more power than he has before. I'm a little hesitant to trust the Angels, honestly. Mm -hmm. I need to see them do something correct other than have Otani and Mike Trout on their team. But this, like I said, this is a guy I will take as my second catcher in draft and hold leagues and be happy with it because I do think he's going to take over as their primary catcher and be better than average, you know, like a 118 WRC plus type player. Yeah. 156 WRC plus last year. And we're looking for plate appearances at catcher ultimately, especially in two catcher leagues. And if he's getting the start every day for them, uh, especially in a lineup that has trout and Otani, there's value there. So a hoppy, I expect to be a very popular two catcher target and somebody you should look to make sure that you try to draft, especially at pick 303. This next player, I think, has more hype around him than any prospect that's not a top prospect in baseball that I've ever seen, and that's Matt Money Mervis. Matt making defenses nervous, Mervis, Mash Mervis, whatever you want to call him. The man it has a microscope on him right now, or magnifying glass, if you will. Uh, he was the star of the Arizona Fall League when I went out there. That's where everybody was coming to go watch, uh, along with Heston Kirstad. And he split time between high A, double A, and triple A last year. 578 plate appearances, slashing 309, 378, 605, 36 homers, 119 RBIs with two stolen bases, only an 18.5% K rate. And right now he's going around pick 313.4. But Vinny, I can tell you today that ADP is not going to stick because I can tell you I was in a couple drafts over the weekend in the Arizona Fall League or at, down um, at first pitch Arizona. He wasn't leaving outside the top 250 there. And I think it's only a matter of time before he starts creeping in the top 200. So my first question, Vinny, 313, do you like him? My second question is, what ADP are you out on Matt Mervis on? 
I will say this. I will say halt your expectations with Matt Mervis as of whenever this is recorded because the Cubs have showed a lot of interest in other free agent first basemen. And we and the Cubs do have a, a very similar trend of blocking big-time prospects by free agent signings. I love the talent of Matt Mervis. He's a perfect fit for Wrigley Field. His left-handed power is just going to absolutely destroy there. But until we are certain that he has a future next year in at Wrigley Field, I'm going to be very weary. I'm going to say no. But if if you know this changes, if they don't acquire a free agent first baseman, I would not be surprised if you see him. I don't know, jump at least a hundred spots, maybe maybe 125. He will mm-hmm. rise very quickly. Yeah, it, he's been, and I think it's a name that's going to continue to rise. If I told you he was going in the top 200, Vinny, are you out on him? As of right now, yes. I would say I'm out on him. Okay. Yeah, but that's, I think, by next week. Uh, there's been 18 drafts. Again, by next week, I think that'll be in the top 300, and it'll just continue to rise, especially if the Cubs don't bring anybody in. So just keep an eye on that. But um, as... Oh, no, go ahead, Vinny. Go ahead. But as the season goes on, or the off season goes on, it'll be very curious to watch this. I'm surprised we didn't see him like pick up another position in the fall league. Like mm-hmm. they could have definitely threw him out in the outfield just to get him up there. But even if he does, if he does come up this year, I would watch that. He comes up as a DH. That would be something to watch, but I'm still very sketchy on his outcome, at least for this season in dynasty wise, go, go get as much Matt Rivers as you can get as possible. I am All right. sold on the talent, the age, everything. I'm big fan. All right. Matt Mervis from him to our last guy. We'll talk about in terms of just um, going through the top 10 here. And that's Miguel Vargas, who I think was the biggest tease of last season. Many people picked him up hoping he would give you uh, production and he did and very limited sample for the Dodgers, but they didn't give him very many chances to produce. 520 plate appearances between AAA and the bigs last year, hit you over 300, 17 homers, 82 RBIs, 16 steals, 13.7% walk rate to only a 14.7% K rate. That is just insane uh, to be doing. Going around pick 322 right now, Mike. Um, Let's talk about Vargas, who we might think might get a shot potentially out of spring training, but you you never know if Justin Turner is going to come back. Um, you never know who the Dodgers are going to do and, and shuffle around here to, to mess with our heads. What are you thinking about with Miguel Vargas? So I got to start by saying I'm, I've been a fan of Miguel Vargas for two years now, like a big fan. He's been ranked high on my personal prospect list. Uh, this is the guy I'm most excited about that I'm personally going to talk about this year at his draft position. The only thing that I question here is how the Dodgers are going to handle him. Like, is he going to get in there? But even with, at his cost right now with that uncertainty, I'm still all in. I think if we all find out that he's locked into a, a regular job, that draft position is going to go way up. This is a guy, like you said, he doesn't strike out. He takes walks. He's got power and speed. He's projected for 122 WRC plus this year with 20 home runs, nine steals. And I think there's upside for even more than that from this guy. This is a guy I really like long term. Uh, like I said, if he gets locked into that Dodgers uh, everyday job this year, I'm basically he he could be a, a, even like a league winner type of player be, because of the power speed he can chip. And like I definitely think you could be looking at Gunnar Henderson type of production if he gets the the plate appearances. You know he's got an even better approach than Gunnar Henderson in certain ways. So uh, I'm all in on him. I think this is a perfect storm because he didn't really show what he is last year, you know, redraft type people just kind of saw him and see him as an overmatched rookie right now. And that's reflected in his ADP. So uh, I would get Miguel Vargas in all formats. And going as late in drafts as he is at pick 322, men of 197 max of 426. Uh, you can take a gamble on guys at this point in the draft. And if they don't hit, um, you know, this is the Martin Perez's Braxton Garrett as Waldo Cabrera, Brendan Donovan, Dre Jameson, like, these are the guys that are going in this range that you can take your chance on and it not hurt you if it doesn't hit. So I like the call and trying to get Miguel Vargas right at this ADP. Uh, but to finish up here real quick, we have the next 10 hitters off the board in terms of ADP. Bo Naylor, Asturi Ruiz, Aswald Peraza, Royce Lewis, Brett Beatty, Drew Waters, Anthony Volpe, uh, 
He won Bay of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Spencer Steer, and Andy Rodriguez. Real quick, Vinny, give me your Cliff Notes version on one of these guys you might be interested in. Looking at this list, the one name that really pops off the screen here is Drew Waters in Kansas City. Um, Drew Waters, big name, used to be a big prospect in the Atlanta Braves organization, found himself out last year, traded to Kansas City. There's no one really competing for it, with him for a full-time outfield spot in Kansas City. I would think maybe Tyler Gentry could be, but what Drew Waters brings to the plate is a solid 250, 260 average, maybe 15, 20 homers, some RBIs maybe 10, 15 stolen bases. Like he's a very solid, solid player for, you know, laid off the board. Uh, he would be my personal target going forward. All right. Drew Waters of the Royals is Vinny's pick. Mike, who's your pick? Well, you know me, it's going to be difficult for me to just say one. I'll be real quick though. Astoria Ruiz, we've talked about him many times. I'm willing to take a gamble on him for his speed upside in most Roto leagues at this price. Oswald Peraza, I'm in on him if he's starting for the Yankees. Royce Lewis, once he comes back, he's going to be the most popular ad in all leagues. So in leagues where you can stash him, he's a target of mine. And Bo Naylor, I like him even more than Ohapi to a certain degree. The playing time's not as set, but he has more speed. And I think he could be like a, uh, he potentially turn into like a Dalton Varsho type player down the road. So that's the kind of player that I would like to have as my second catcher in a lot of leagues. All right. I love the, uh, the analysis from a few guys there. So again, just keep in mind again, these guys ADPs are all after pick 340. So again, you can take your dart throws on these guys. Andy Rodriguez all the way down for the Pirates at pick 454. So just again, if you're watching on YouTube, we have the ADPs up there for you to see. And if you're listening to the podcast and you're curious what they are, just make sure you guys comment on the YouTube video or make sure you write to Vinny at down on the farm 8, Michael Richards at MP Richards should know your handle top of my head by now, Mike, at MP Richards, 1981. And, uh, or you can write to me, Dimendio, too. But that will do it for this week of the call up. If you guys are enjoying the show and you're on YouTube, please make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below for these guys that can answer your questions on any prospect you have. And make sure you follow these guys on Twitter, like I mentioned, their Twitter handles just a second ago. And of course, if you're listening on the podcast feed, thank you guys so much. You know, every single week we're going to be here giving it to you. The best prospect info, 24-7, 365. Make sure you guys are tuned in every week for that. But for Vinny, for Mike, I'm David. We'll catch you all next week for the next episode of The Call-Up.